Okay, now because we've had um, so I've had a few customers um, report, a few teachers report that they're having some troubles with Reaper and Sample Tank, getting both things to work on their computer for their MuzTech uh, um, work that they're doing. Uh, so trying to record MIDI and edit MIDI inside a sequencer. Um, and I've found that Reaper's worked really well for some of my students um, and for some others, mainly on Windows machines, have had a few problems trying to get it all going with Sample Tank. Uh, so a lot of my students, I now get them to use a piece of software called Studio One. And you can get it from studioone.presonus.com uh, and you can download a free demo. Now the free demo is fully functional. So here I'm going to download this. The free demo is fully functional. It's got a few um, plugins which are missing and a few other things about it which are not as good as obviously the professional version, but um, that doesn't stop you actually from being able to use it to do these MuzTech assignments. Everything works really, really well. So as you can see, I clicked on um, Studio One 2 Professional for Mac, even though I'm just going to use the free version, and it's downloading at the moment. Um, in here, uh, is if you want Windows, depending on, on a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine, you'll get it from there. So, because I want to guide you through the install process as well and make sure everything gets going on your computer, I'll let this continue downloading and we'll come back to it in a moment once it's all downloaded. Okay, just as our download is finishing off, I, just, um, I'm, I haven't got a MIDI controller here with me at the moment, so I'm actually going to use my iPad as one. And I just went to this YouTube website, typed in a search of how to use an iPad as a wireless MIDI controller and came across this video that explains it all pretty well. So um, I'm going to try and use that. The other thing which um, I'd like to show you is um, I just got a new device for a, a MIDI pickup, for a, for a guitar, sorry, and this is Fishman Triple Play. This is a fantastic thing which I've just started using. Um, it's just a little pickup that you affix to your guitar and it then transmits MIDI wirelessly to a little USB key or USB dongle which you plug into your computer. And then your computer sees it as um, your guitar as a MIDI input. So it works really, really well. Okay, anyway, our, our download is just finished, so I'm going to double click it to install it on my machine. And you install it on a Mac just by dragging and dropping it into your applications folder. That will now copy across. And I'll now be able to find it in my applications. Where are we? Studio One version two. Boot that up. And we have our licenses agreement. Yes, I accept them. Now, at this point here, don't run the full one, don't even run the demo, you just want to run the free one. Um, if you run the demo one, then it will run the full version, but for 30 days. And I'm not entirely sure you can then um, downgrade to the free version once you've done that. I haven't tried it before, so I don't know. So, but anyway, I tell all my students, run the free version. Okay, and we say, okay. Now at this point here, and this is probably one of the main reasons why I want to show you this whole installation process, is that it is important that you install the content from a PreSonus user account. Um, because what's happened is that with this installation in the background, it's installed the program, but it hasn't installed a lot of the loops and also the MIDI sounds that you are going to need. So I'm going to install the content from a PreSonus user account, um, and it's just come up here to put this in. Now I'm not entirely sure if that's somehow linked through to my PreSonus user account that I've created previously, because I've got some other PreSonus gear, or if it just does this automatically. Um, if, the, if you do need to create a user account already, then it means you probably you know, need to do that online at the PreSonus website. But I'm going to install these two packets here, which are 323 megabytes, and this will install all the MIDI instruments so I can play, um, uh, make some MIDI sounds and record them, um, and then also some music loops. So I'll install those packets. Now this will take a little bit of time again because I'm on a pretty slow internet connection at home at the moment. So we'll let this download and I'll come back to you once it's finished downloading. And here we are coming up to the end of the downloading and installation of these extra packets of data needed for it. Thank you, and we are done. Brilliant. So once that's done, Studio One will open up. Might take a little while the first time. It's going to try and find all the plugins um, that you've got on your computer, if you haven't already, but that was pretty quick. Okay, now here we are. Do you want to create a new song? That sounds like that's what we want to do. We'll create a new song. 
and I'm going to start off with an empty song just to keep it easy and I'll just call this a demo. Now all the stuff here with sample rate, resolution, if you're on a slightly older computer then I do recommend you putting this down to 16 bit, it will make the session run smoother. Um, and this is um, CD quality audio anyway so it's not bad, 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit, that will be fine. Um, <clears throat> you might want to change your tempo if you know you want it faster or slower, um, you can change it within the session later on but we'll just leave that for now. Song length 5 minutes, that can change as well and we'll leave our time base on as bars 4-4. Four, four. And I'll, you may also want to change where you save um, things to in case you have a special folder on your computer that you save everything and you can do that by clicking that button. I'm going to go OK and begin this. Now here we are. Now, and the great thing about Studio One is it's designed to be a one window interface, unlike Pro Tools or Logic which um, or other software doors, DAWs, which have multiple windows. This is just one window, but it does have different components to it, such as you can hide that, or you can show your mixer window at the bottom, or your editor window. Um, there's no data in there at the moment because we haven't created anything. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to bring um, some sounds in. Go to my sounds, see what we have here. Uh, we're going to go to some music loops. Because I'm going to record something, but in, rather than using the click track, which I would usually do by just enabling that metronome down there, I'm just going to choose one of um, these beats down here. You can audition it by listening to that. Now at the moment I haven't got any sound, so this is you may not either, so it's really important for us to check what's going on here. On my Mac I'll go to the Studio One Preferences and I'll look to see what my audio setup is. At the moment, for some reason, my audio device is AirPlay, which is going to my Apple TV I've got in the house. We want to change it to my built-in output. Now, if you have another device plugged into um, your machine, such as uh, an audio interface, such as uh, something from M-Audio or Focusrite or Apogee or any of those other wonderful companies that make audio interfaces, it will show up here and you can choose that. I'm going to bring my sample rate down to 256. Once again, if you're on an older machine, you might want to make that longer. But the more samples you add in, the greater the delay will be if you're trying to play something. So keeping it 256 or 128 um, will actually make the, um, the delay probably pretty much unnoticeable as I play. So I've changed my audio device to be my built-in output. So with my audio configured, let's see if this works. Great, so I'm going to use that. Now I can just drag and drop it, and it's a great thing about the drag and drop functionality of this program, it's very, everything's very easy. Um, the reason why I'm bringing a drum loop in is I'm going to record along with it, and it makes it easier to play along in time, so that all my MIDI data will match up with the time. Now even though this says here 115 beats per minute, it is conforming to our tempo down here of 130 beats per minute. And I can just click on that and move it up and down if I want, if I want to change the tempo. And because this is all MIDI data, it will change that absolutely no problem. Just hide that there. So we can now look at our MIDI data and we can even edit it too. And it's as simple as very much just dragging things and editing the data like that. If I want to make it go louder or softer I can do that too with the velocity down there. And if I want to change the volume of everything I can actually select all of the notes and then go and grab freehand tool and change the volume of everything down there, or the velocity I should say. And there we go. Now I can zoom in and out using this here as well as lots of keyboard shortcuts that are available. But we've got this thing here which can be duplicated just by right clicking and going um, to duplicate or D. And now I can actually go and try and record along some of my own MIDI with it as well. Now if I had a MIDI interface plugged in here, it would be very easy, everything would go very nicely, but because I'm doing this from home and I haven't got any MIDI devices here, I'm going to set up my iPad and try and use that. So to create a new track, let's double click in here, make sure I call on the instrument track, and create keys, and OK. Now what I need to do though is I still need to apply a sound to it, there are no sounds in here yet. And now one clue is by clicking on that, but the easiest way of doing it is coming back over here to these patches that we downloaded, selecting instruments down the bottom rather than sounds, and going inside presonus to find what I'm after. So I might get a keyboard now, I'll just go for say an electric grand, and I just drag and just drop it on top of this track that I just created. And here is our electric keys. 
Now, what I also can do is I can play it from my iPad, which I'm doing at the moment. It's got all inputs. Now, one thing I had to do before is I had to configure it and add in my new keyboard. That's the one thing you may have to do with your keyboard as well. You might have to add and select new keyboard and select where it's coming from. Um, that might be something you might need to consult the manual or just watch some tutorial videos. I managed to figure it out just by pushing buttons until things worked and it only took me a minute or so. But we'll just say OK. Now, because of uh, my iPad is taking a long time to communicate over the network, it's a little bit of lag, so I'm not going to be able to play in time. But that's OK. We'll see how we go. And record. OK, there we go. A horrible little melody, but we're just doing this for demonstration purposes, of course, aren't we? So I'm just going to trim that up, go and grab that, drag it to the beginning, shove it up to there too. Now I can double click it and look at what I recorded. Now you might have heard that I pushed an F sharp instead of an F, didn't sound very nice. That one there, no, where is it? There. Oh, I wasn't meaning to go to a G, so we'll put that one there. Now, um, one thing I can do, of course, is quantize with MIDI, as you may have come across that. If you haven't already, quantizing is a lot of fun. With quantizing, you can select them and decide Studio One. We can tell it what degree we're going to quantize to, to eighth notes or to sixteenth notes or whole notes, which are semi briefs or quaver, uh, crotchets, quavers, semi quavers. I'm going to go to eighth notes. And by clicking on that, you may have then noticed that everything just suddenly snapped to a line. If you want to adjust your quantization settings even further, you can do it there. And you can always just click on action and go quantize or push Q. Or one thing I really like, which is quantize only 50% of the way, which still can retain some humanness to it. I can go and change all these if I want. Now they're all moving because they're all selected. Take it off. Now I can just move the one of them. And have a listen to that now, see if it's with it in time. Okay, that was a little bit syncopated, move it back, and of course we can make things longer too. Now because of the quantization settings, everything is snapping. To turn that off, I can click off snap, and I should be able to drag that now anywhere where I want without it snapping to a line. There we go, that's beautiful. If I wanted to do that to a whole lot of um, notes, I can select them all, and then move them like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you lots of the editing functions that you need for your MuzTech unit standards. Um, this is most of what you do with MIDI actually. Um, is by massaging it like this and improving the performance will make it sound a lot better. And of course if we decided we didn't like the instrument, you can just bring it up here and we can change it to, to be a different type of sound. So if we want to go for a um, organ sound, we can click on that. And now instead of having the piano, we'll have an organ. Let's maybe go to a um, rock organ. Awful late, let's try climbing it. Now here in my mixer I can go and balance everything if I want to, um, up and down, I can pan them right and left, and I can also put effects on. I can put a bit of distortion on this one if I want to make this clavinet sound a little bit cooler. Got my inserts here, I can click on that and go find my red light distortion. And it made it a whole lot louder so I can go and pull down the volume. And I can go and add some more plugins to it, like some chorus. Let's go crazy, it's some phaser. I won't even change any settings and we'll see what happens. And if I want to put on some EQ or compression, there's this thing called a channel strip where I can go and maybe boost some of the mids. I can take down some of the lows. I can put in a low cut or high pass filter. I can add some compression. And we can try and make it sound a whole lot better. And maybe some reverb. Let's 
so even though this is a free piece of software, there is a lot of things you can do here, which is a lot of fun. You can record in MIDI and make all sorts of different sounds, and then you can of course mix them and add in effects as well. When you've done all that, when you're happy with everything, how it's going, you've edited it, edited it, everything's in time and sounds nice, you can share your song by going to the song menu and exporting uh, a mix down of it. And here you can export it as a WAV file or AIFF or FLAC or Obvorbis, which is a compression like MP3 type thing. Um, and that way you can share it to think places like SoundCloud or put it up on the internet for friends to download. Um, and also you can burn them to CD. So there we go. In the last 10 or 15 minutes I've shown you how to download, install and activate Studio One, the free version. Um, record MIDI. We haven't shown you how to record any audio. Pretty easy though, you can just double click there, instead of instrument track, make it an audio track, and then make your input. Um, here is where you'd select your input, so it will be usually your interface which is plugged into your computer. I can't select anything at the moment because I'm using the input for my screen capture software and it won't share it. So if you wanted to record microphones or electric guitars or um, keyboards or other instruments, you can do that using it that way. So um, I hope I've answered a lot of questions. If you want to get really in depth with Studio One and use a whole lot more, we do have um, a website called Groove3.com, which gives you a whole lot of um, tutorial videos that you can download for using with a lot of music technology programs, audio programs. And in here you can download for about $20, I think, um, about two or three hours worth of tutorial videos for PreSonus Studio One. Um, and I highly recommend that you do that. They're really worth watching, but even if you don't, Studio One's really easy to use. You can just sit down and play around with it for ages, and you'll find that you can do a lot of the stuff just by pushing buttons, by right-clicking areas, and um, seeing what comes up, and um, also just by using the Help menu. So if you have any um, issues with this, then uh, give me an email. I'll be happy to help if I have the time for it, of course. Um, but otherwise, do Google searches and see if you can get it all working. But this should be an easier option for many people than what Reaper is, um, particularly if you're trying to use Reaper with Sample Tank. So, good luck.